welcome and welcome to the dollhouse. Like My name is Misty Pendragon. You, if you've ever been to a Joss Whedon panel, you've probably seen me. <laughs> or I used to say, hi, I'm Misty and I'm a buffaholic, but now I'm, I'm a Jossaholic. Um, Essentially, I'd like my panelists to introduce themselves. Uh, let's start with Eric. Did I fall asleep? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, for a little while. For a little while. Hi, I'm, 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 I'm uh, Eric Zuckerman, a.k.a. Eric in the Elevator. Uh, I was your fan guest two years ago, and I still love you all. Um, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Joss's work. I will... I will state right at the outset that I don't think this is his best work, and I have some Woo! opinions uh, I will, I will agree about that. You. Oh, uh, Mr. Uh, were we also going to do rules of engagement about where, <laughs> where, where yes, the spoilers please. start um, and end? If possible, I have not seen Friday's episode. I don't know how many people have. So, so if no. how many people here have not? seen Friday's episode. That's way too freaking many. We're not doing Friday's episode. No spoilers. No spoilers. Okay. Okay. Not the point of schedule. I'll do my best. <clears throat> my name is Mark Amadon. I'm on this panel not just because I love Joss Whedon's work to pieces, but also because I'm a uh, fair student of the entire nature of inalienable rights and I consider Dollhouse to be probably the best show ever done on uh, network television concerning rape. Oh, you were the one that said that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm Brenna Levitin. Uh, yeah, I think the ethics of Dollhouse are fascinating and I've been watching it from the beginning. It's possibly not his best work, but I do not think it's his worst by far. Yeah. I'm Howard Beatman, longtime science fiction fan. I watch way too much television, um, and um, um, I believe in the Joss. The Joss lies. Um, well, yes. I mean, we can talk a little bit. Start off right away and talk about the ethics. I'm very interested in this. Yeah. Okay. What you're saying, the ethics and the best show about rape. Well. First and foremost, um, since pretty much the Enlightenment, and because we're Americans since the founding of our nation, um, we've had this notion that there are inalienable rights. And for that phrase, which you've undoubtedly heard to make any sense, you have to look at what's the notion of an alienable right. Um, I have a car, and I have an inalienable right to pursue property and thus shop for a car. But the right to my car is alienable. I can turn around and sell it, sell it for parts, sell it when I'm done with it, give it to my teenage daughter when she's ready to drive. But, uh, <laughs> but my right to my car is alienable. I have inalienable rights, rights that I don't get to give up because it literally makes no sense. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of property, which I deliberately said because you're too used to hearing pursuit of happiness and you haven't thought about what it means. The original draft and the original battle slogan in the American Revolution was life, liberty, and pursuit of property. Jefferson decided that that was a little too narrow, and that's what gave you the cliche that you haven't thought about in too long. To subsume your entire consciousness and just give it up may someday be technologically feasible, but it's a violation of your inalienable right, just as murder is a violation of your inal inalienable right to life. So that's my big heavy drop. Who else wants to pick this up? Well, I kind of want to springboard off of that a Good. little bit and say that the the writers seem to have this idea that there's that there's a middle ground there, and this is the part of the show that drives them the most crazy. That they have this idea that there's this <laughs> middle ground there that you know. Uh, well, I, it, it's pretty much personified in Adele DeWitt, where she is sending her charges out to, not to put too fine a point on it, as you would say, mm -hmm. be raped. But, you know, um, as with um, as with Priya, then she decides there's a line that can't be crossed. And I don't well, see that, I, I don't see where that line is, and I also don't see that line being used consistently in the show. Well, so okay. Can I Victor for <laughs> herself? For herself. Yes. Yeah, so, but what I, can I respond sorry, to that? Yeah, sure. Um, so, yes, but they're not in their doll-like state. I would, I 
see a, a more firm line in the fact that they have a consciousness. Yes, it's not their original consciousness, That's but true. they have a consciousness. It's it's consensual with that consciousness. And I would say if they were like like the handler who was raping Sierra, mm. that was actual in my book that was rape because she couldn't consent because she was in her doll state and she didn't know what was going on. I think That's I, a good point. I, I think where the show draws the line is the differentiating the body and the mind. And That's a good point. if it's a rape of the mind, if if the person <clears throat> feel if the current consciousness thinks of it as rape, it's rape and it's not if not. As far as the show draws the line. I would not argue that mm -hmm. in, in, in ethics. Um, but I, I, I go further back. I would consider that the real rape is the original mind wipe. Yes. Even though um, it was not just consensual but contractual. Some um, of those are But they were coerced. pressured into those yeah. contracts. Some of those are coerced. No, we, 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 we don't know if that's true for that's all true. of them. That's true. Echo at in, least. In, 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 in fact, Carol most Carol. of the time it sounds like the people came begging for it. In, in but some no, case. I don't think so because yeah. every time they mm -hmm. they say that right. they've basically like found the found the the people who the actives and they were in such states that they didn't really know how to. I don't think that was necessarily. There's there's consent, but there's like consent under duress, yes. and I don't think it was necessarily under duress, but it was. They were not in the right state of mind. Like you know, Victor was war war scarred, and uh, you know, and Sierra was getting out of that terrible relationship, and uh, yeah, Priya, Priya. Sierra was you know. put in the state of duress. Yeah, by absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and that is that was going to be my point. I've been waiting patiently um, <laughs> because interrupting is rude, and. Adele is already shown numerous times to be morally flawed. She was put, chosen for her position exactly because she is morally flawed. She may move the line back and forth, but I don't think Joss ever does. I think Joss has a very firm concept and that he's showing people dancing around the line. Mm -hmm. Next, Adele fully believed that Caroline had something she simply had to put in her past and was entering into this time period deliberately. And of course, um, Melly, November, had just lost a child. That was one that they actually told us what her trauma was. Right. And that she just needed to get past it. And if she could do this by you know, going for five years into this thing where she really just didn't care what happened to her. That was one of the you know, quasi-voluntary entrings into these contracts. Right. But I'm going to turn around <laughs> and... But she was still like her... She was still not in a... You could claim she was traumatized. She was, right. She, she was, was not in a fully, sure. oh, not necessarily not fully aware, but mm -hmm. in a fully almost responsible for herself right. kind of a state, and so you could argue that it it was still not. She shouldn't have been allowed to make that judgment because, and I think that's what they do for mm -hmm. almost all of them. They either pressure them into it, yeah. or well, they find someone who's in a disadvantaged position, and or well, they don't even know it. Like Alexis yeah. Denethoff, Denethoff's character, mm -hmm. and what they did, what they did with with uh, Bennett. Sure. But yeah, you know, Alpha, yeah, he was this uh, Alpha, oh criminal, God. a convicted criminal. And uh, at the beginning of the project, we were getting a lot of our uh, volunteers from the prison system. In retrospect, not the best idea. Warning. <laughs> Warning. <laughs> yes. Um, and, I love and, the um, pictures, Topher. De oh. Deliberate interjection. Let us give a cheer to Enver's... Um, Oh my God! Oh man! Uh, 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 Enver is a mimic. He's a yeah. brilliant actor. Oh my God! I His voice is it. like—it sounds like 